Hello and thank you for staying with us on Plus TV Africa. This is T10 where we we'll bring you the biggest and most interesting entertainment stories. My name is Elsie Godwin and I've got my co-anchors with me, Ife Oluwa Shunke and Nimi Dekombi. Hiya. Hey guys. How are you doing? I'm okay. Ah, okay, hey bro. Danny bro. <laughs> So what are you exactly? Eh? Mm. Uncle. Because you understand that your cousin said Danny Bruer because Who's she... Your cousin? <laughs> Wait, what happened to Bobrisky, by the way? He's Nothing good. Happened to her. Have you been seeing any of his posts? I don't follow, nigga. <laughs> Have you been seeing... No. Because I heard Isha, um, he was arrested some time ago and they took his cars and all of that. And all of a sudden, mm -hmm. no news about Bobrisky, nothing. True. I think he came out to debunk that. Um, I saw a post... See, I don't know. But, but he has not been, he hasn't been, been in the news. Listen. Like, I haven't seen any post. You need to go to his page, too. Because I, I know a friend sent me a post from his page, but I couldn't mm. view it because it's a private. It was, he, became, he became private again. So yeah. So, I don't know. Maybe it's going yeah. to Maybe it's stuff. true, though. Maybe it's true. Moving on to very important issues going on in the So, but is not important. It will come for you. He's not. Actors Guild of Nigeria reacts to Nollywood actor Enes Azuzu call for help video. Speaking to Nan, the president of AGN, Emeka Rolas, um, says it is unfair to blame an entire industry for the unfortunate turnaround of one of its own, calling the video defamatory. He said, and I quote, we appreciate all the concerns and show of love from members and public over Azuzu's Plight, but I need to point out here that AGN has never abandoned him. He went for rehabilitation at the Mercy Land Christ Deliverance Ministry, Worry Delta by Prophet Jeremiah Omoto Fufei, a spiritual patron of our guild. He spent some months and recovered. End of quote. Emeka Rolas also added that the prophet gave Azuzu gifts, including money and a jeep after the rehabilitation to further support him and no one heard from him since he left worry until the viral video. Fair? Um, well, I always said um, something was funny about that video. Yeah, you did actually. And um, when um, Daddy Freeze, even though we don't like to give him um, relevance, uh, when he brought it up, he said, didn't you go for deliverance and stuff? So Daddy Freeze already told us about this deliverance before he make our realize if we came to talk about it. And I felt it was quite unnecessary because there was another story that came up that said um, it took, that it was shirtless to garner sympathy. And I'm like, if you're really sick, why do you need to garner sympathy? Your truth should speak for you, right? Mm -hmm. So um, something has not been adding up with this story all along. So I understand where uh, Mimi Carolas is coming from. And I think um, people shouldn't be so quick to say the AGN this, the body is not doing this and all that. Because at the end of the day, if you're not a member, they don't owe you anything. The fact that you were once an actor or you are still an actor, but you're not a member, they don't owe you anything. From his response, I think he's a member. From a maker's no, response. I'm saying that people okay, generally, should not okay. like people like the guy that was coming to say, eh, see what you people are doing. Like mm -hmm. the guy that was doing the uh, video, the uh, what's that funny guy? Um, what's his name? Which funny what's guy? guy is Tupac, about? Igwe Tupac, like the guy that was doing the ad oh, for okay. him. Oh, okay. You know, the guy that does his ad lib, yeah. Whoa, I, wow. I, I know there's a guy, who I know does there's his a guy, ad but yeah. nobody knows his name. Yeah. Oh, no one knows him. Okay, I know him. So, back to what I was <laughs> sorry, that was just a digression. Um, the reason why I was saying that is because uh, the guy that was saying he kept calling other actors, actresses, the bodies yeah. that they neglected the guy and all of that. So, I think people shouldn't be so quick they, to jump at stuff like that. Get your facts right before you even come. And then, when you're sick, it's I don't think it's just get the right people to know about it, get the right people to know what is wrong with you. All this old social media, bringing your stuff on social media, it's really sad how people mm. leave for social media these days. And I think, so let's see what happens afterwards. I think I'll just say that um, it's very easy for people to judge other industries or to judge a body when they are not within that body and when they don't know the intricacies of the part of the story. If Emeka Rollers did not come out to clear the air and say that, okay, we had helped this guy before, everybody would have just thought that, oh, Nollywood just abandons its former stars and they don't have any provision for them. And he's coming out to clear the air and say that, okay, you know what, when we first heard that this guy had stroke, we helped him. So now, why is he coming out? And why is he sending him to the church? To the church. I was going I had to issues go there. With the <laughs> church. I was like, why didn't they just Secondly, send him to the hospital? Why do I have a feeling that it's a drug problem? Mm. 
Well, I don't think we can. We don't know for sure. I, no, I'm not saying why do I. Why do I have a feeling? That I just feel it's a drug problem because the church thing doesn't have the for someone with stroke. Then you them rehabilitation. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. When you're saying rehabilitation, maybe people that had a severe car accident and they can't walk again, then you're saying, okay, mm. they're going through um, rehabilitation therapy and stuff yeah. like that to be able to teach them how to work again. How but to I think stroke, sometimes stroke affects... No, in this case, it didn't affect anything. Okay. Do you understand? So I feel like it was a drug problem. Well, we don't know for sure what it is, but um, I don't understand the parts that they had to send him there. And mm -hmm. then, although they said he's the is he pastor grand patron of the association, yeah, or he's the pastor. Of the so, well, so if he was delivered and the deliverance worked, why what happened? Why did he collect the money and the jeep and mm -hmm. then? went into oblivion and then come yeah. out to start what making to online. Money a lot of things a lot of questions though but i like that he came that's out that's why i said to, it might be a drug but he might mm -hmm. i like that he came out to clear the air and yeah. to at least say that the guild has done some things for him and mm -hmm. they shouldn't blame everybody for anybody's misfortune mm -hmm. every time it happens and i, I mm -hmm. remember he first said exactly that on the show that we cannot keep blaming everyone you know and we talked about them having health insurance and yeah. all that and i don't know how we got from health insurance to going to church <laughs> but let's just leave it there and see how this plays out. I, I wish him recovery, though. Whatever it is, is battling. Mm. I hope he gets better. So, to a very much more good news. Rihanna is to receive President's Award at 51st National Association for the Advancement of Colored People Image Awards on February 22 in California. The award recognizes special achievements and distinguished public service. President and CEO of NAACP said Rihanna has not only enjoyed a groundbreaking career as an artist and musician, but has also distinguished herself as a stellar public servant. The NAACP is honoring her professional work as well as um, the commitment to social activism and philanthropy. Mm. Set an album with us. <laughs> <laughs> you know, people have, been calling, people have been calling Rihanna a liar because of the album that she has not dropped. Mm -hmm. mm. But I think that um, they, they, they choose to be blind to, to the other, other things that she has achieved, yeah. which is what I want to say. That okay, looking um, away from okay, the fact that she has not released an album in the past four will, years, when she's ready, hopefully, mm. <laughs> because she's focusing on so many projects. I don't think people have been following Rihanna's growth over the past decade. Mm -hmm. All the things that she has gotten in involved with her fashion you know the fact that and i think she's one of the most like versatile entertainers out there oh yeah the fact is. that she has established herself not just as a Remember the picture huge book name. She yeah the picture. Well. Mm -hmm. you know she has established herself not just as a huge she, she's known as a huge entertainer she's known as a huge fashion icon and beauty icon fenty beauty fenty and savage you know so i believe that this award she really really deserves it i mean some people might say that she does not deserve it because mm -hmm. she has not been releasing music for a while yeah what is it about music <laughs> exactly mm -hmm. the, the, the award is not really about music because several other prominent people have what caught my attention the most about um this whole thing was the fact that um she got signed to rock nation when she started yeah by mm -hmm. jay-z and jay-z in 2018 i mean 2019 was the one was one the day yeah and then now so someone you signed a few years mm -hmm. ago mm -hmm. also has the, is getting the same yeah. recognition mm -hmm. as yourself i that think that just makes me proud of yeah. Rihanna and her growth very... you understand so people i want to say it's album with us <laughs> take a chill pill this girl is doing so they, much they, she is doing so much and then in the movie industry i don't know if you guys have seen guava island they had um what's his name Name, Childish Gambino, what's his real name? Mm -hmm. um, Danny, Glover, Danny Glover, right? Yeah, he had Danny Glover in that movie as well. Very great movie as well. So she's doing a lot in the in the movie scene, um, fashion scene, eight. oceans. Yeah, I already mentioned movie. Mm -hmm. So fashion, philanthropy, mm -hmm. All of that, you get, she's actually a global force to reckon yeah. with. Yeah. And she's not even mediocre in these things. It mm -hmm. could be a case of, okay, we know there's some celebrities who have their own um, fitness line, their wellness line, and we don't really hear about it. So but she has established back back. herself as a successful person in all of these different industries. So I think that, okay, looking away from the album, because a lot of people yeah. are just focusing on that album, mm -hmm. she has really, really, I feel like people should look at her growth. 
the growth yeah. that she has made as an individual. And for this NAACP award, one of the things they are particular about is her foundation, mm -hmm. which she founded in 2012. She, I think that's called the Clara Lion and Foundation, and it focuses on health care and education for mm -hmm. under seven mm -hmm. communities, you know. So that's one part they are really concerned about and mm -hmm. appreciating her for, aside the music mm -hmm. and all she has done. And mm -hmm. like you mentioned, Jay-Z has gotten it, Lauren Hill has gotten mm -hmm. it, Jesse Jackson, Muhammad Ali, like, you know, great people, and you can <laughs> you can see what they're doing in yeah. the society. So this is well-deserving as far as I'm concerned, mm -hmm. and more win. Yeah. I feel like the next decade is going to be more amazing for her because she's even like the richest female entertainer mm -hmm. in the world. I think you're going to say, I think like the next decade, if I will be the one getting this award. Ah, mm. oh, sorry. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe you could, you know, I mean, life I is... I don't live in America. Doesn't sorry. matter. You could just... I'll get the you one. You could migrate, migrate, and... But they're not giving you visa No, I don't again. plan to go to America. No more visa mm. I don't even plan to go to America. Yeah. If I'm going even to live outside planning. this country, mm. it can't be America. Mm. It can be the UK as well. Mm. It's be Ghana. No, I live, <laughs> I live in Ghana already. Ghana is a beautiful place to live, of actually. Course, of so course. it's no, it's not laughable. It's a great place to live. Mm. Yeah. Okay, stay tuned. T10 will be right back after this break. Welcome to Tea Time on Plus TV Africa, where we bring you the biggest entertainment stories and, of course, analyze them for you. You can have both parents and still end up as a useless child at the scene every day. <laughs> Most times, I worry more about where I'm coming from mm -hmm. and where I am now, wow. and that determines my next step. Why are you sounding like Ali Alibaba? Oh, <laughs> Plus TV Africa, we're feeling good. No time to do Everybody feeling all right. Minimal are you? Mm. music is for mature minded people. I got DM sometimes from Malawi, like, what? Sleeping early, sleeping early. Welcome back. This is still Tea Time on Plus TV Africa. Legosians will adapt to it. And this is coming from Skills as he speaks on the Okada ban. The Nigerian singer said, and I quote, the saddest part of the Okada and Keke ban is that in a couple of days, the outrage on social media will reduce because Lagosians would have embraced the harsh reality and found ways to adapt. The government is aware of this. SMH, love and lies to everyone. End of quote. Mm. Well, he's right. Yeah, he's actually saying the truth because that's one thing that we have seen that has happened so many times in Nigeria. We look at Bring Back Our Girls, when we look at Leah Sharibu's case, when you look at, you know, different issues that have happened in Nigeria, you see that the fire is always hot when it starts, but then over time it's like people just forget, except maybe like NGOs that keep on carrying these cases. Mm -hmm. You see that people just forget that nobody's really saying anything about it. It's like we move on to the next, um, the next buzz or the next news that is in um, the next headline that is making the news. So what he said about the Okada ban is not is not a lie. The truth uh -huh. is Nigerians are going to move, especially those that are not affected uh, by well, the Okada I ban. Know, I know Nigerians will move on, but I'm looking at it from a different angle. So are they not exactly supposed to move on, except they are ready to go on the streets and, and say we are going to be there until something happens. That's one. Secondly, so <laughs> why are you laughing? <laughs> so secondly, is it the people that are supposed to be blamed, or the people we voted for that do not care about the cries of the citizens? So you have a child, and you tell the child, place your hand on this hot kettle, and the child places um, his or her hand, and it's hot, and the child is saying, it's hot, it's hot, it's hot. You keep pressing the hand there. At some point, I know maybe my, my example is a bit extreme. Yes. You'll get to that his and just be there, except you listen and realize that you're supposed to pull that child away from it. So what people do is complain and tell you this is not comfortable, this is not comfortable. Now, do the governments listen? Even if you look at the Western world, where we have the social media that was brought to us as well, right? Mm -hmm. 
when something happens they go online to talk about it and because they go online to create this conversation and have hashtags their leaders listen yeah, they and they go change. back to the table to say okay this is not favorable how do we make this a bit okay how do we make the transition better for these people we know that we are looking at a mega city but it seems we have gone about it the wrong way mm -hmm. how can we ease the pain a bit right so i don't think people are not supposed to complain and move on it's just sad that our complaint is um, it's like you're pouring water into baskets it's mm -hmm. not doing anything that's where i'm looking at it from yeah but the thing, the thing about this um, Okada ban is that the whole argument is now becoming very, um, I wouldn't say it's becoming dicey because mm -hmm. some people are saying that, okay, they side with the government mm -hmm. as regards the Okada ban. Sometimes I feel like those people, they are just being selfish. But then when you listen to their reasons, sometimes it makes sense. For instance, some of them were saying that, um, I saw Charlie Boy, mm -hmm. Charlie Boy was like, he's four the Okada ban. Are you serious? Yes, he said oh, it wow. is, which was very, very surprising to me. I was like, Charlie Boy is for the Okada ban. Because he's an Okada yeah. rider. <laughs> exactly. Mm -hmm. But then, according to him, it was like that most of the Okada riders are from the north. Mm -hmm. And he spoke to one of his malams, the malams that stays in his area, and he said that there are some people in the north who sent them in large numbers to, to come to Lagos mm -hmm. and then this they plan to like hold riots that kind of yeah that's what that's they what plan he, to hold riots yeah like to do to start riots like the ones they do in Kaduna they are planning to start yes they are planning they've not started, they've not started. Okay. so according to him that that's why most of the Okada riders we see are northerners so maybe when the Lagos state government says that okay it is because of security issues I can understand but when we have um bike hailing companies like Gokada Max NG or the O Ride, o -Ride mm -hmm. these people have you know, regula regulations. So why not work with these um, companies and look for a way to make the Kokada more available to the average Nigerian instead of just banning all of the Okadas? Because the truth is just that the way Lagos has been structured, there are some places that bus will never ever get to. Mm -hmm. That when you get to your bus stop, you have to trek there, and the distance is very very long. So I feel like the government should. I don't think they should just do an outright ban. They should try and work with these bike aiming companies. They are regulated. Their systems are good. They should work with the Lagos state government to make life better for Lagosians. So basically, uh, the, so the bitter truth is that um, these bikes and cares are really a menace to the society, regardless of how we want to look at it. Yes, we enjoy their services. There are places that they would not go to. It's not because I don't have empathy. It's not because um, I don't sympathize with people that do not have cars or do not have other means of getting to their destinations. It's also because um, when you look at this Okada people and what they've done to the society at large, it's really bitter. Do you understand? So I kind of side with the government, but I empathize with the people as well. Now, I'm siding with the government in the sense that they gave um, the um, Igobi thing, that if you go to Igobi, the accidents, yeah, they uh, accident. cord, mm -hmm. blah, blah, blah. Um, the Northerners, I don't have any problem with Northerners being in charge of um, a particular... That's why we call them for unity in the first place. So mm -hmm. if they have are... Have people the one, Exactly. <laughs> you know, are they not the ones telling us who yeah? So I don't have a problem. I don't see Charlie Boy's angle from that side, mm. unless he's saying that, okay, there's a revolution that is about to occur because mm. they are nothing and so they're about to bring Boko Haram down. That was, that was his point, actually. Yeah. Hmm? That was his point okay. in the post. So, um, so, like, all of that, if you think about it, but what skills now, we're moving away from what skills said. Now, it's not, I see, yes, we, we all know that we have leaders that do not listen, right? But if people really want a change, we need to stand firm. Like I was talking to somebody, we, okay, we say the youth should keep talking about social issues, how we can get a change and all of that. And I'm like, look, every great nation, achieved whatever they did through blood, sweat, and tears. But in Nigeria, nobody wants to bleed, nobody wants to sweat, nobody wants to cry. So before- We sweat every day. Eh? <laughs> With this whole track, of course. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm talking about blood, sweat, and tears in the literal sense that people actually, like, 
He said, ah, that uh, you see people protesting and they go to the front of the White House. If you go to Aswell, I said, how many can they kill? Are you ready to sacrifice your own self? Are you ready to die? Ready to sacrifice yourself? Yes, I just need the right course. You need the right. So you, you've not seen the right course. No, look, I have seen it, but I haven't started the movement. And when are you starting? No, you see, I'm part of the. I'm not taking myself out of it. I am also part of the problem. I'm saying this. Is a very, very selfish. You cannot be part of the generation. problem and be this aggressive about it. I'm not sure. Do you know what? Did you watch? If you start the movement watch, now that is affecting me, I will stand with you. I will die. Did you watch <laughs> Joachim's? Um, what's his name? Joachim Felix uh, Phoenix's uh, speech when mm. he was blaming himself. Even his, he gave. You know, he blamed himself yes, as yes, yes, after yes, what? Yes, yeah. He was calm about it because he was ashamed of his attitude. Yes. If, uh, you cannot be aggressive and be blaming. Where you are? <laughs> calm down. This is not my aggression, no. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, I think this if is I, the right time for me to say this is not me. I know we like using the word victim, blaming and victim shaming. Yeah, that's if we want to call the quarter riders victims, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I feel like I have to say this so that my chest will come down. Mm -hmm. These people and the way they used to drive. Mm -hmm. I mean, and then they were so annoying. Even when you speak to them, they insult they you. Insult they you. do whatever they want to do. Give, I was going That's to give an example. They come, they, need. they come in, in front of your car. I was going to give you an example. You hit them, which is of their own doing, and then and the then whole crowd gather you. I was you going to bring that up you. because I saw you know, that so actually happened. They destroyed a car. You know, so like even if the government is going to soft pedal, I don't know if that's going to happen. This will teach those that will still be in business some lesson. To know no, they shouldn't suck pedal on the Okada They should, the they should do the they should all right, exactly. they should work with the bike, no, whatever. Yeah, 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 I think no, I don't. I, anyway, we don't need any of that because they they scratched my car too many times that I don't. So then now you're being selfish. Uh, okay, that's, 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 I'm part of them. Before we go, if yeah, don't be aggressive when you're blaming yourself. I'll say it again. Anyway, American rapper <laughs> Dwayne Michael Carter, professionally known as Lil Wayne, says he's 53% Nigerian. In a new video going viral on social media, he said he took a test and it came back he is 53% Nigerian. He further added he has to see what Nigeria looks like. I think this is the second time he's been in the news. Yeah, he's to come to Nigeria, right? Yeah. So, Oga, is, is a play? Okay, maybe he's to apply for visa. <laughs> 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 and then he says he's been trying to get away, but I mean, I would be excited to see Lewin in yeah. Nigeria. Lewin is one of the deepest artists mm -hmm. ever. Like, I, I'm not a big fan of his body and his looks and all those, you know, but his music is just yeah. deep and awesome. I've been speaking to Lil Wayne, so you might be on tea time whenever it comes to mm. all right, No, I wanted on. to say that. Uh, <laughs> like, apart from Lil, um, Lil Wayne saying that he wants to come to Nigeria, there have also been several you know, American artists who, mm -hmm. thanks to Kadi B's story, mm -hmm. I said that, I think Nicki Minaj also said that she would like to visit Nigeria because she said she likes the energy. Mm. And I'm wondering that it must She <laughs> cannot match it. Because, okay. it, you know the thing about... You have to she, be real. The thing about Kadi B, I mean, Nicki Minaj coming to Nigeria after Kadi B has done yeah. what she did, is the fact that there is a an unspoken rivalry yeah, between be them. So, it. even if they are not saying it, their fans are saying it. So, anything yeah. she does, it will be... It will be compared to Kadi You know, and like, oh, if she is chilled like ah Cardi B was this. If yeah. she decides to go, um, you know, like trying to she tries to copy. Even comparison going yeah. on the yeah. every time. Yeah. For me, I would say thank you to Cardi B because Cardi B has done a lot for tourism in Nigeria. Carry. <laughs> <laughs> she has, and to Lil Wayne, I hope that he, if he's serious about coming to Nigeria, because this is the second time he's saying it that he would like to come to Nigeria. I think he even referenced it in his song. He referenced it in his song in his recent album that he realized that he is Nigerian. He hinted, he gave that hint in his song. So he should come I think to he's Nigeria. But look, look the, looking the, at his face, what tribe do you think that's from? Ah. Yoruba, of course. I, mm. no, for me, yeah. I feel like he looks Igbo. Nah, never. I feel like he looks Igbo. Like he looks like a shayi. Like no, he looks like a shayi. Uh. <laughs> 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 okay, that's our wrap up this episode of Tea Time. Thank you for watching. I remember you can catch up on all this conversation all over again by visiting and subscribing to our YouTube channel on Plus TV Africa. You can also watch Tea Time on Azure TV and in London on Ben Television. My thank you as always go to my co-anchors, Nimi Dekombi and Ife Olu and the entire production team. Thank you for watching. My name is Elsie Godwin. Stay tuned.